Uh, your vision for the Welcome Home Tour. Just uh, so excited to get back out and, and connect with our amazing fan base. Uh, obviously, it's been with COVID. It's a long time since people have been able to come together in so many uh, settings like this. So to be able to get out and reunite and connect with people is awesome. But to be able to do it with uh, so many awesome Gamecocks across the state of South Carolina and in this region, I'm really fired up about to be part of. I know it was expected, but to go full strength, full capacity this fall. I know everybody's doing it now, but just for you and your first game, knowing that there's going to be a, a full house there. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, just to, to see the crowds and the, the environment down at uh, Kiowa last uh, weekend and then to think about williams Bryce Stadium in the fall and, and the energy and excitement around South Carolina football right now to have a packed williams Bryce Stadium when we kick it off against uh, Eastern Illinois is something that uh, um, I couldn't be more excited about. Do you remember going to these things with your dad? Yeah, um, I do. Um, probably early on wasn't as well attended and, right. and uh, passionate in the fan base as we are right now or Virginia Tech is right now, but certainly remember going to events like these with him over the years and and uh, when I was coaching at Mississippi State, Sylvester Croom uh, had the assistants go out and talk, so I did it then. Coach Spurrier used to have us go out and talk. I did a lot of them at Virginia Tech, so I've, I've always enjoyed it. It's what makes college athletics so great and, and uh, something that I've been to a lot of them, but they never get old. How many new plays we have? How many new plays we be given today, do you think? I'm this sure. Year? I had a. Uh, had someone asked me last week if we were going to score any points this year. That was their first question. So um, uh, I love it. You know, it's a, we got a passionate fan base. I'm sure we'll have some new plays, and, and I'm, I'm all ears and, and, and open to any and all suggestions. I, these have evolved or devolved from, you know, you, you mentioned Spurrier. This used to be the place where he could go and say, Free Shoes University, and you can't spell citrus without UT. Yeah. And then that blows up, mostly our fault probably. And, you know, if you go up there and they're kind of different. I miss the, you went up there and would say, you know, well, yeah. whatever. Do you, are they different from your perspective than they used to be? I think it's different in the sense that, you know, before, if you said something in here, there's a pretty good chance it was getting out. Now it's getting out. Somebody's got it on camera. Somebody's videoed it. You guys are here. So it's funny you said that because I was working through all my little jokes to use on rivals and things like that this morning. And there were a few that I don't know if this is the time to say that one or not. And it's all in fun. I mean, I know people get it. I know Jimbo Fisher said something about Alabama a couple weeks ago, one of his. It's all in fun. I think people and coaches know that, but you also you also have to be smart at how things are interpreted with what you said in the sense as well. In terms of a year like this, obviously, like to be able to get out and see fans a little bit more, like you know, like, bring out the last week or whatever it is, like, what is that reception like? And then, you know, how has that changed? You know, going to the assistant coach to head coach, and, and what's that kind of like? Oh, it's been awesome. I mean, was, we were in Kiowa last Tuesday for the practice round, and then my with some, with, uh, about 10 of the coaches. And then my wife and I went back Sunday for the final round. And just the, it was amazing to me how many South Carolina Gamecocks were at that tournament. How many of them came up to me so excited for the season, just bought season tickets for the first time, just renewed season tickets, haven't been to a game in a few years, but we're going back this year. Uh, it was awesome. And um, uh, what make, it's what makes this place, one of the reasons it makes this place special, but just to be able to connect with so many people last week, feel that excitement, uh, and then to come to events, come to events like this, and, and for people to be able to uh, feel and see that excitement, and, and me as well, it's it's, uh, it's awesome. We missed it last year, and it's just another uh, step and sign of things getting back to normal. So were you on the 18th green when the last No, I was, uh, I wish I could, I, it would be a great story if I could tell you I was out there in the middle of the fairway, and I was part of the mob, like running up to him. I wish I could, I, I could lie and tell you guys I was, I wasn't. I was, uh, we got there, we left early that morning. My wife and I got there about 10 a.m. We walked around the course for six and a half hours, just the two of us walking around. Got to see a lot of great people. We left, honestly, about the time that he was on. Mickelson and the leaders were on the fourth hole, I think, is when we left. And I said, you know what, I'm going to get back to Columbia in time to watch the last three holes on television, so that's what I did. I wasn't running up 18 with them. I was sitting in the condo we're living in, watching it on TV like a lot of people were. But I didn't have to deal with the traffic after the round, so it was probably, it was, there were some positives in it also. Personnel-wise, are you still expecting everybody June 1 that you were expecting when you broke up? Yeah, um, I've had a lot of those guys are, have been 
on, back on their own all, all month of May. A lot of these guys are trickling back in this week. Our uh, incoming freshmen, guys that weren't here in January, they're arriving today. Uh, so that's exciting to have those guys getting on campus. And then, yeah, everybody that – Everybody that was with us in spring practice, unless something happens between now and next week, we're expecting them all to be there. In that van, are there any any new injuries, anything like that? Guys, you're not expecting to be ready to go? No, you know we had some guys that uh, uh, were held out of spring practice that we knew we were optimistic we're going to be full going in the summertime, and, and they will be. We uh, had a staff meeting yesterday to get an update on the injury situation and the health of the football team. And, Everybody is right where they need to be, and credit to you know Clint Haggard, our head trainer, and Rachel Sharp, and their entire staff for the work they've done uh, to get our guys ready uh, to go. So they're, they're full speed. And we got a few guys that'll be a little bit limited uh, in June, coming off some more recent surgeries. But knock on wood, everybody's going to be ready to roll uh, for the start of practice. June one coming up around the corner. What does that logistically look like on y'all side, getting prepped for that, and like you know last few weeks, kind of getting ready to sort of go zero? Yeah, it's busy. I mean, it's 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 crazy in the sense that it's the first time that young men are going to be able to come on campus since January of 2020. But then you add the fact that it's a first time staff. There's, you know, it's not like we've been recruiting here unofficially and officially in South Carolina for years. It's the first time we've ever done it as a staff together. So just we spend a lot of time just on the organization of it. We want to make sure when a young man and his family come to campus that it's organized, it's structured. Uh, there's no uh, uh, disorganization. So we spend a lot of time talking about that, how we want it to be organized, what we want it to look like. Not just the unofficial visits, but we've got uh, official visits going on. We have camps going on. We have a lot of stuff that's going to be taking place starting on June 1st. So we, we spent a lot of time talking about it yesterday in a staff meeting, and then we've got another meeting on Thursday to, to get it organized to make sure that uh, first thing on was that Tuesday morning, first thing Tuesday morning, we're ready to roll. You had uh, you'd mentioned at a previous opportunity that you wanted to get prospects on campus like every day. Yeah. Uh, it, are you pretty pretty close to that right now between camps and visits? And stuff? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I was counting it up over the weekend. There's only a few days in June that we don't have something going, whether it be unofficial visit, official visit, and and uh, we're trying to be as proactive as we can about when guys are coming, make it organized, and, and hopeful that we will be. You know, Ideally, we'd have somebody here every single day, and we're recruiting every single day. It may not happen that way, but the reception from prospects uh, about their, with their excitement of coming and how, looking forward, how much they're looking forward to getting to Columbia is uh, great, and we're talking to more and more of them uh, each and every day, and looking forward to it. All right, thank you. Cool. Good. Yep. Good. All right.